No one is allowed admittance except authorized personnel and vehicle. Don't you ever do what you're told, Harry? Jack, what's going on? Susan! I'm still here, Daddy. No, 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 no. The whole thing might give way. No, it's too risky. Blasting could completely block off the air shaft. Nobody goes down there. Mr. Klinger, my daughter is trapped down there. Now, either give us a hand or stay out of the way. Keep coming. That's it. Harry, we're gonna have to blast. Coming. Be careful at the detonator. Be OK. You're in a bomb shelter. Once upon a time, a junk man had a dream. I want to build a spaceship, go to the moon, salvage all the junk that's up there, bring it back, sell it. So he put together a team, an ex-astronaut, a fuel expert. They built a rocket ship, and they went to the moon. Who knows what they'll do next? This is great country. Oh, it's beautiful. Just look at it. Reminds me of where I grew up as a boy. <laughs> Every place reminds you of where you grew up as a boy. That's why I enjoyed growing up so much. I understand what he's talking about. Well, just smell that air. Does it do something for you? Yeah, it does a little something for me. Speaking of what it does for me, when we get back to the motel tonight, Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we can freshen up a little bit and go down to the dining room. I can slip the maitre d' a little something. We could get us a nice, cozy corner table. Maybe some candlelight. A little music, huh? Hope it's not dry. I beg your pardon? I say, I hope it's not dry. A lot of counties up here are dry. I'm all for music and candlelight, but it'd be a shame if we couldn't have some wine. be a real drag, all right, Harry. Oh, how much further, Harry? Not far. Come in. I don't wear uh, Hawaiian shirts in Twin Forks, Wyoming. I'm not going to Twin Forks. I'm going to Honolulu. Not according to this. <laughs> Here, Larry. Don't ever do that to me. Get me Teague in Washington. I'm not some kid just out of law school. I've been with the Bureau for 16 years. Yes? Thank you. Yes, sir. Jack Klinger here. 
Yes, I got the order, but I'm just on my way to vacation. And you'll have to postpone your vacation, Jack. I've got an important job for you. What is it, sir? It's Harry Broderick. Harry Broderick? Well, what's he done now? Well, he bid for and got a contract, a salvage contract, on one of our sundown installations. The sundown what? They're bomb shelters. They were built out in the boondocks just after the Cuban Missile Crisis. One of them was put on the block, and Harry Broderick went after it. That sounds legitimate to me, sir. Well, maybe it is. But there's a lot of exotic equipment at sundown, and we want to know what he's going to be doing with it. But why the FBI? And why me, sir? Well, Jack, we had a meeting, and we know that you and Broderick know each other. You know how he operates. Some even say that you're friends. No, sir, that's not true. We're not friends. I try to be a nice guy. I try to get along with the man, but we're not friends. Jack, we want you to handle it personally. What you're saying is that if something goes wrong, I'm the fall guy. Well, Jack, uh, that's about it. <laughs> Major Phil Burke. Thanks, I'm Harry Brock. Yes, I know. And you must be Skip Carmichael and Melanie Slosa. Oh, well, yes. Very nice to meet you. How are you, Major? You all are not exactly unknown since that uh, junkyard moonshot of yours. Oh, yeah. Well, come on inside. Thanks. Comfortable as best you can here. This place is kind of a mess. Uh, would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Susan! My daughter's around here someplace. She can't wait to meet all of you. My wife has gone ahead to fix our new place up. Uh, my daughter is having a ball here. It's like a big abandoned amusement park to her. Oh. Uh, Major. Uh, please, call me Phil. I get enough military around here all the time. Okay, Phil. Uh, you know why we're here. Oh, yes, of course. But you are a day early. You can't start until 10 a.m. tomorrow. Oh, we know. We just want to look around to see what size crew we'll need. No problem at all. Good. Come on, I'll show you. OK. Thank you. All the radio gear has been removed. My furniture and the contents of the powder magazine are taken tomorrow afternoon. Everything else is yours. Some pretty good stuff, too. This is how we monitor what goes on below ground. The pictures you see are the shots of the various rooms. How come it's still running? Good old U.S. Army regulations. As long as we're in charge, the beat goes on. There's also an alarm system that goes with this. Did you really go to the moon? What's this? I thought about it real hard, and I can't figure it out. Did you really do it? This is my daughter, Susan. She has a great deal of curiosity. Oh, oh, well, well <clears throat> Susan, uh, no, actually, I didn't go to the moon. You didn't? Everyone says you did. Well, I guess they mean figuratively. You see, well, these two people, Melanie and Skip, they went to the moon. How'd they know how to do it? Well, Skip's an astronaut. He knows how to fly a spaceship. Melanie knows all there is to know about fuel and rockets, and she gave the ship power. Then what did you do? Uh, I got the stuff together. He did a lot more than that, Susan. Harry here was ground control, so he made sure that we got there and came back safely. We all work together. That's a good way of doing it. Isn't it? Pleased to meet you, Mr. Broderick. Broderick. Nice to meet you, Susan. Can I call you Susan? 
call you Uncle Harry. You know I'd really like that. This is a cross section of down below. There are two entrances. One is the stairway here, which you get to through this building out back. And the other is this elevator, which is right here. How far down is the shelter? 300 feet. This is an underground water tank. It was built in case the above ground supply was contaminated. Now, what are those two vertical lines beside it there? Those are air supply vents. Uh, they'd be closed if the air was radioactive, but they're open now, of course. Pretty impressive. Well, ready to go below? Absolutely. Can I go? Hey, if it's okay with Mr. Broderick. I'm sure you know more about it than your father. You bet. <laughs> you stay here, later. Good dog. This elevator and the monitoring system in the house draw their power from the shelter energy supply. They have no connection with the above ground system at all. So no matter what happens topside, the shelter will always have its own power. <laughs> this is the communication center. Now we've pulled the plugs on all the consoles, but all the video here is still operating. Mm -hmm. Behind those panels over there is the electrical storage system, and it's a beauty. Mm. There's enough power in there to run a small town. Harry, you know what this is? Radar console. No. It says radar console right there. Aha. Uh -huh. But what kind of radar console? That's a polyband radar console. Probably bring top dollar. No, no, that's not for resale. It's for us. What do we need with it? Because with a little modification, we can measure the thickness of an opaque surface. Oh, you mean like ice? Aha, uh -huh, exactly like ice. Now, if we ever get around to filling the iceberg contract, this could be a very useful tool. Uncle Harry? Yes, Susan? Want to see something really neat? Sure do. Place your hands against the wall. Hands against the wall. Ooh, that's cold. Hey, Skip, feel that. Now place your ear against the wall and listen. Sounds hollow. Like you were in a submarine? Yeah, that's it. Exactly. That's because behind that wall is a huge water storage tank, 20,000 gallons. I like to listen to the fish swim around. You know, you're right, it is fun. What's behind that door? Well, remember, this shelter was designed to accommodate some very important people. Come on, I'll show you. Come on, Leonard. Well, how do you like it? Wow. Look at this. Huh? Nothing. Not bad. A lap of luxury. You know, Harry, I might bid on this place myself. Why? My apartment. What do you think? Want to help me redecorate? <laughs> me and Larry like to come here and play house. I bet you do. Well, honey, as of tomorrow morning, all this is going to belong to Uncle Harry. Or to Skip. <clears throat> come on, we better get going. Okay. Come on, Leonard. Leonard does like it here, but sometimes he has accidents. <laughs> Leonard, don't you even think about it. Come on. Come on, let's go. Well, that's about it. I think we know everything we're going to need. Thanks for the tour. Uh, you're very welcome. <laughs> we'll see you all tomorrow morning. Sure thing. <sighs> Uncle Harry? Can't you afford a new car? It still works. <laughs> Thanks again, Major. Susan. You're welcome. Bye. See you tomorrow, Sue. Bye, Susan. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Susan. in each piece. Do I have to? Yes, you have to. I'll make you grow up and be strong. I hate TV dinner peas. Well, I do too. Unfortunately, that's all I had in the freezer, so eat your peas. Leonard? Leonard? Susan, what is it? <laughs>
Started on the good stuff today, huh? Yeah. What's this? Ah, oh, looks like we have a welcoming committee. Hi. I'm Harry Broderick. You weren't here yesterday. I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to turn around and go back. What? No one is allowed admittance except authorized personnel and vehicles. Now, if you'll just turn around. Whoa, 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 wait up. I have authorization. Well, I'd like to see some proof, sir. Absolutely. What's the problem? Somebody's bringing inspection on you guys today? I'm sorry, sir. This authorization is no longer in force. You're going to have to go back. No longer in force? I've only had it two days. I'm aware of that, sir. My orders are that only authorizations issued as of today are valid. Who issued those orders? My commanding officer, ma'am, Major Burke. Well, can we see him? My orders are no exception, sir. Now, wait a minute. We own this place. We bought it. Uh, uh. uh son, uh... Where are you from? What? What part of the country are you from? Pennsylvania. Where about? Small little town you've probably never heard of called Mayfield. About uh, five miles from Carbondale. <laughs> How come? I had people there. They used to be coal miners. Now they're into something else, like most folks are now. Yeah, my family too, same way. Boy, I never thought I'd run into anybody out here who knew where Mayfield was. Did you miss it? Yeah. Especially now that deer hunting season's in, huh? You know it. So I wonder if you'd do me a favor. What? Get Major Burke on the horn, tell him I'd like to talk to him. Oh, sir, my Just orders. Just tell him it's Harry Broderick. If he says no, I'll turn right around and go back. Sir? Mayfield, Pennsylvania, huh? How do you do that? Beautiful country. Reminds me of where, where I, I grew up, up as a boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Mr. Broderick. Go on through. Why, thanks. Have fun when you go home. Hey, going home on leave next week. Good luck. See ya. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, uh, Harry, but this gentleman is in charge now. Uh. Don't you ever do what you told, Harry? What are you doing here? This place is off limits for all civilians. Jack, what's going on? There was a seismic incident occurred here yesterday, Harry. And there was an earthquake? Yes. We didn't feel any earthquake. Well, we were over 80 miles away. Was anybody hurt? Well, we were shaken up a bit. We're, we're fine, Harry. Good. You didn't come all the way out here just to see if everybody's fine. No, Harry. I was ordered here to keep an eye on you. But it's a whole different ball game now. I've had to take over command of this installation. There's a group of Army scientists on their way here in the next five hours. What about my contract to salvage this place? That'll have to wait, won't it? Oh, Daddy. Hi, honey. Hi, Uncle Harry. Oh, hi, Susie. Are you all right? I'm fine, thank you. But I don't know about writing in. I can't find her anywhere. I'll help you look for her in a minute, honey, OK? Okay, Daddy. See you later. Okay. Come on, Leonard. You'll all have to leave now. Wait a minute now. There's no rush, is there? I have my last pot of coffee on the stove and some peanut butter. Well, it's 80 miles back to the motel. Too late for lunch, too early for dinner. What do you think? I'm for coffee and peanut butter. Good. <laughs> hmm? OK, 
Come on, Leonard, let's take the stairs. Well, Jack, looks like you're making a career out of our little organization. Not by choice, Harry, I can tell you that. without clearance. Please return for proper authorization. Come on, Leonard, crawl. You have crawl. That boy, Leonard. No more for me, thanks. You know, it could be that they're gonna have to fill in this entire shelter. What about all that gear down there? Might wind up under 300 feet of concrete. I paid for all that stuff, Jack. Sue me, Harry. Attention, please. You have now entered Area Tango. Return to ground level for clearance, or the authorities will be alerted. Come on, Leonard. Oh, Leonard, you broke the beam. What's that? Hmm? Attention, please. There has been an unauthorized entry into Area Zebra. I repeat. There has been an unauthorized interest Must be a mouse. In mouse? Attention. Yes, they get into everything. One of them must have set off the alarm system. Come on, I'll show you how it works. I repeat, there has been an unauthorized entry into Area Zebra. Attention, please. There has been an unauthorized entry into Area Zebra. I repeat, there has been an unauthorized... I'd like to meet that alarm. The government did some studies and discovered, as you can see, that... Most people respond faster to a woman. There's Susie. Susan. Hello, Daddy. I thought I told you not to go down there anymore. I had to get Raggedy Annie. <laughs> Can you hear me? I'm still here, Daddy. <sighs> Everything's a mess. That's all right, honey. As long as you're OK. I'm fine. It's yucky down here, all that dirt. That's OK, honey. Just hold on. I'll be right there. We have to get down there. Hold it, gentlemen. I'll take it from here. Miss Slozar, can you operate the television? Yes, of course. Would you please stay here and keep an eye on the little girl? Harry, you and the Major take the elevator. That leaves you and I to check the stairwell. Let's go. Uh, uh, Susie, this is Uncle Harry. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to come down and get you. But till we do get there, you, you, you can talk to Melon. She knows a lot of really neat games, OK? OK, Uncle Harry. Questions? Yes. Good. Then um, you figure out something, and I'll try to guess what it is. Okay? The shaft must be blocked. We're still a hundred feet from the bottom. Yeah, give me a hammer. This carpet. There's a door underneath. Give way. My daughter's trapped down there. We'll get her out, but we got to take the time to do it right. Oh, no, it's blocked. How far down do you figure we are? 150 feet? Yeah, me too. Let's get back upstairs. Come on! The elevator shaft's blocked from about 200 feet. We don't know how far down it goes. Stairwell's blocked at 150. It probably goes all the way down. Does she have enough air? 
I don't know if the air shaft is blocked. If it is, there's enough oxygen for about 12 hours. Corporal. Yes, sir. These phones are dead. Where's the nearest radio? About an hour's drive from here, sir. Hop in your Jeep. Get to it. Call Fort Gunderson. Tell them I want a chopper with a cave-in rescue crew up here right now. Priority Alpha. Yes, sir. <laughs> The Army scientists are due here in five hours. They can start excavating until the Fort Gunnison rescue crew gets here. What do we do till then? Just wait. The girl's in no immediate danger. Attention, please. Sensors indicate a stress overload in the underground water tank. 70% possibility of rupture. <laughs> something very important for me. Will you do it? Yes, Uncle Harry. Okay. I want you to keep a close watch on Leonard and let us know if he does sneak. Now, that's very important. Okay. You see that table behind you there? Yes. Why don't you and Leonard climb up on that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Now watch him about the sneezing. Okay. Pump's busted. How do we get down there? Is there a way we can blast? There's no dynamite within 100 miles. What's in the powder magazine? Just some old artillery shells. Could you rig a charge? Well, sure, explosives are explosives. What do you have in mind? Well, there's too much blockage in the stairwell, but we might be able to clear a space in the elevator shaft. No, it's too risky. Blasting could completely block off the air shaft. Wait a minute, the air shaft. How wide is that? About 30 inches square. I can fit through it. Nobody goes down there. What? I can't authorize that. Jack! Come on, Harry, you know what the situation is. The Army's on the way. Mr. Klinger, my daughter is trapped down there. I'm well aware of that, Major, and I'm very sorry. I cannot allow civilians to mess things up. Now, either give us a hand or stay out of the way. Come on, Jack, you know I'm right. <laughs> Daddy, let her have to sleep yet. That's good, honey. Susie, can you hear me? Is that you, Uncle Harry? That's right, honey, it's me. Why do you sound so funny? Are you in the wall? No, honey, I'm up here talking to you through the air vent. Leonard hasn't sneezed yet. That's good, that's good. Uh, Susie, I'm going to drop a coin down through the air shaft. I want you to listen carefully and watch and let me know if it comes through. OK. Okay, here it comes. I can see it, Uncle Harry. I think it's a silver dollar. It is. It is, Susie. And, and in a few minutes, it'll be yours. Thank you, Uncle Harry. Okay, honey, now keep your eyes on Leonard. And somebody's gonna come right down and get you. Okay. Let's get this off. OK, 
Okay. Bring me some more of that rope. Hold it up just a minute. Let me test now it. Just take up the slack, Harry. No. You follow I'm me as I go. Okay. All right. I know, Susan. Where's Melanie? Right now, she's standing on my shoulders. I think I'll get out of here. That'd be nice. How's the water, kid? Wet. <laughs> Looks like it. You're on a boat. You're right, it's wet. Thank God you made it. Yeah, we'll have her out of here to Jip. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Susie. Whew, I like your private swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> Present from Uncle Harry. Thanks, Uncle Harry. You're welcome, Susan. Well, Jack, we did it. By George, we did it. Got here just in time. I thought Leonard was just in the sneeze. Well, then we better get out of here, haven't we, huh? I'll take it. Okay. in the shaft. Harry, we're gonna have to blast, and you're gonna have to do it from up there. Mel, if everything isn't exactly right... Harry, we've 
got no choice. Get one of those artillery shells out of the powder magazine. I'll get it. Okay. All right, now you're going to have to drill about a 20-foot hole straight into that blockage. Okay. What else? Well, you'll need some brass tubing to fit into the hole, uh, some putty, a large pipe cutter, a roll of twine. Don't have any drills, any post hole diggers. Don't even have any shovels. How do we cut a 20 foot hole? Here it is. 40 millimeter shell. Okay. Does that air compressor work? Yes. How much hose you got? Over 100 feet. You got pipe, pipe. You got any pipe? I got a shed full of PVC. Great. Get the hose and pipe. We're in business. Mr. Burke, have you ever seen a Bangalore torpedo? I'm a legal officer, Miss Lozar. I know what they are. Good, Harry. I want you to make one. Uh, metal? It's okay. I'll talk you through it. Yeah. Okay, you you guys drill the hole, I'll make the bomb. Harry! Yeah? I don't want to rush you, but in about another hour, this water's going to be over our heads. I wonder if this thing unscrews. Start it up. Okay, Harry. Now slide through the shell casing about halfway down. Be careful of the detonator. bomb shelter. You're doing fine, Harry. Be careful with that powder, Harry. Okay. How fast does this fuse burn? I have the faintest idea. I've never used that kind of fuse before. Terrific. <laughs> That's 20 feet. Let's go. Turn it off. Oh, 
have the pipe down 20 feet. Great. Wish us luck. You bet. All right, that's good. That's good. Well, it's all up to Harry now. Yeah. Hey, now. Don't you worry. In another couple hours, we'll be out of here, and I'm going to take you boogie. Just like old times. Skip. Speaking of old times, I want you to know that what we had together in Houston... Hey, I know that. I always knew. Come on. Take it easy. Okay, hang on. There, yeah, I oh, got you. Okay, come to me, Susie. Ah, girl, we're gonna be fine. Okay, we're gonna be just fine. All set. Okay, I'll tell them. See, it's going to be just like the 4th of July. Okay, honey, I'm going to put you up here. Uh, girl, you stay here. Harry, can you hear me? Yes, Skip, I hear you. It's all clear. Come and get it. Yeah! Come and get it. Okay, honey, come on. Leonard first, over the top. Here, take Leonard. Okay, let's get Susie in there. Okay, Harry, here she comes. Up through the middle. Get ready. tell you now. What's that? I didn't want to get you scared, but we were in real trouble down there. I know you were. I love you, Uncle Harry. I love you, too. I love you all. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, Jack, wonder when your rescue team will get here. You know, I bet we could go down and do the whole thing over again before any of them get here. Probably could. <laughs> Go ahead, Harry, have you laugh. But I think you're forgetting one little point. What? Your valuable salvage is sitting eight feet underwater. Well, like the fella says, you win a few, you lose a few. More winning than losing, I'd say. How's that? 
I think Harry's gained more than he's lost here. I think I know what you mean, Phil. What value can you place on a child? Oh, I'm not talking hard, Harry. I'm talking about salvage. What salvage? According to Article 38 of the Government Commerce Code, Harry is entitled to treble punitive damages. Harry's entitled to what? The government defaulted. But it wasn't a default. There was an earthquake. The earthquake happened before Harry took possession, thereby preventing him from doing so. Ipso facto, default. Uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what do we get? Since the government owns three other shelters similar to this one, you are entitled to salvage rights to all three of them, free and clear. <laughs> Can you believe it? Uh, <laughs> well, Jack, I guess you'll be working on these other little projects with us. We'll get to know one another real well. Yeah. Harry, do you have any idea where these shelters might be? Why, sure, sure. One of them is at uh, Slack Jaw, Nevada. The other is just on the outskirts of Moose Breath, Montana. But the one you'll love the very most is in the middle of the Mojave Desert, surrounded by the world's most beautiful sand. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,